Okay, um, we're going to rationalize the denominator today, and there's many reasons why you might want to do such a thing. Um, some reasons are better than others. Um, some of them are personal preference. Um, whatever the reason, if you want to graduate from anything, you'll probably have to rationalize the denominator a couple times. So we're just, that's what we're going to do. Okay. Um, let me see. What am I going to start with? What am I going to start with? Let's just let me just uh, throw out a example. That's just this the best way. Okay. Basically, rationalizing the denominator. Um, one of the key um, goals of doing this is we don't want the square root or the radical in the denominator. Okay. Um, rationalizing the denominator involves um, removing that property from this expression. So what we'll do, and I only know this from experience, is I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom of the fraction by square root of 2. Okay. Um, if I have a fraction, I can do whatever I do to the top, I have to do to the bottom. I can do whatever the heck I want to the top as long as I go back and do it to the bottom. Okay. Um, so I, I, can, I can do this. This is a, a legit move. All right. Um, and what this is going to produce is 2 over square root of 2. Remember, anything times itself is the square of that item. Okay? So now that I've squared that item, remember that basically the radical sign and the uh, exponent cancel each other out. So at the end of the day, I'm left with square root of 2 over 2. Okay, and this is approximately equal to 0 0.707 and the sine of 45 degrees. I just threw that in there because you'll probably, you're, you're going to see this one. Um, so yeah, that's, that's pretty much it, you know. Um, they're not all this simple and some of them can be kind of confusing. So I think it's just best that we just uh, dive right into it and just start doing some examples. So let's see here. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do... How about 11 over x? Okay. Well, notice that that's equal to... I, you can break the radical up like that. It's no problem. We can do that. Okay. And we want to remove the radical from the denominator. I'm just going to do the same thing I did on the previous problem. Okay. And I end up with... Eleven x over x. Okay, so it's not too bad. Um, now, where it might start to get a little confusing is when you run into one of these. Okay, um, I'm just going to use the same problem. Okay, so we've already did one over square root of two, but what do we do when we have this cubed root? How do we get rid of the cubed root? Okay, that's a little weird. Well, I what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this. And like I said, I only know this from experience, okay? And what I'm, what I'm about to do next also comes with experience. Okay, I just uh, you'll just have to work out the problems. Um, I'm going to multiply top and bottom by 2 to the 2 thirds. And I'll tell you why. Remember that if I have like bases, all I, get, all I have to do is add the exponents, right? Well, if I add 1 third plus 2 thirds, I get, I get 1 back, don't I? Okay, so... Okay, so there I am. Okay, now let me just take a. Now, two to the two thirds, I can break this fraction up because two thirds is really just two times one third, right? Same thing, right? So, I'm, what I can do here is I can break this up and I can break it up this way. and then square the whole thing, or, oh, my pen cap won't come off, or I can go two squared to the one third, and I can do it that way. See how I did that? That's all I did was I, I broke up the, ex, the exponent right there, 
because remember from your exponent laws, a lot when when I'm multiplying um, the exponents, all I do is dis distribute them into the parentheses, and that's what I did here. So either way, I distribute this thing, it's going to end up with the same answer. The only difference is this one's a little more simple simplified because I I can write a four here. Uh, for you know, instead of like two to the, the cube root of two, is kind of a messy number. So, uh, what what we can end up doing is we can say final answer. Okay, one of those deals. All right, let me. Okay, this is one that confuses everyone. Because, um, you know, it, sometimes you get in the habit, and I'm just going to say right now, five, square root of 5 plus square root of 3 is not equal to, you know, it's easy to forget that one. Um, you know, sometimes I catch myself doing it, but just, just, just realize that multiplying is and dividing is a lot easier than the addition and subtraction. So right away when you see this, uh, try not to fall in that trap right there. So I'm gonna rewrite this down here. Okay. Um, the best way to go about this one is I'm gonna multiply this by a special thing. They call this a conjugate. And the only thing a conjugate is, if you haven't noticed yet, that's just, all I did was change the sign, okay? And the reason we wanna do this, because it, it invites us to the FOIL method, okay? Right there. So, um, this thing's end up, gonna end up simplifying um, pretty well. So, I'm going to go ahead and put my equal sign here, and I'm going to rewrite the numerator first. Um, that's, cause that's a piece of cake. Now I'm going to go first term times the the first first. That's uh, just five square root of five times root five is just five. And I'm going to take square root of five times square root of three, but it's negative. Okay. Now I get to multiply. See, if I multiply root five by root three, I get to stick them together. Okay, not in addition. So that's good. Uh, root three times root five. And both of these are positive, so this is going to be, I'm going to end up doing the same thing. And then root 3 uh, times negative root 3, well, that's just negative 3. Okay? Now, notice in the middle here, I get negative, uh, I, I've got a negative expression plus a positive expression of the same one. So those, if you add them together, go to 0. And then I'm left with... Um, I'm left with 5 minus negative 3, so that turns on the plus 3. Actually, that just actually, that still stays negative. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't cancel that negative. Set. It still stays negative. Okay? My bad. Um, so, the final answer is 5 minus 3 which is two, and that's gonna simplify down a little further, and we'll get root five minus three. Wow, I almost made a mistake there, didn't I? So, you, you, you could see that, and that's probably what you'll run into, you'll just do something like that. Um, you know, most of this is, is pretty good once you get the hang of it. And like I said, it's just gonna, it just takes, takes some practice. Um, go through these, I think I've given, gave you a pretty good uh, head start on what to do. So um, if, if you get a really weird one, uh, you know, let me know and I, I, I might post a video on it or something like that. Okay. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in coming videos.